Welcome to 3.8 Euler Diagrams and Arguments. This is our last video for Chapter 3. We're almost done. So, Euler di Diagrams, we kind of touched base on this on, the, on Day 1 notes. They're diagrams that represent four quantified statements. Okay, so we're looking at our quantified statements again. So if we take a look here, all A are B. Notice A is completely inside of B. The second diagram, no A, R, B. Those two circles are not touching in any way, shape, or form. This one is some A, R, B, and the things that overlap are right here. And then you can say some A are not B. Notice they overlap, but they're talking about a portion that's in this part of A. So how do we use Euler diagrams to make an argument to say if something's valid or not valid? So the first thing we need to do is we're going to be given some premises or scenarios, okay? So the first thing we do, make an Euler diagram for the first premise, okay? Then we'll make an Euler diagram for the second premise, and we can do this on top of the first one, or we can kind of look at them separately. The argument is valid if and only if every possible diagram illustrates the conclusion of the, di of the argument. Okay, so let's take a look at two examples here. This first example. Okay, so we're going to use Euler diagrams to determine if this argument is valid or not. So, premise number one, all U.S. voters must register. So if we take a look, I'm drawing my Euler diagram, okay? So if I have a U.S. voter, they all must register. So that goes back to the quantified statement, all A, R, B. So all voters must register. Premise number two, all people who register must be U.S. citizens. Okay, so I have the register people and they must be U.S. citizens. Okay, so the conclusion is all U.S. voters are U.S. citizens. So if we were to take these two Euler diagrams and kind of put them together, right, since voters is inside register and register is inside U.S. citizens, we would get this diagram, okay? So does this match the fact that all U.S. voters are U.S. citizens? Well, I have voters inside of the big U.S. citizen circle. So therefore, we could say that this is a valid argument because there's only one way, only one possibility to draw this Euler diagram, okay? All right, what I want you to do is I want you to take a look at this next example here, dealing with baseball players and ballet dancers and athletes, okay? So what I want you to do is draw some Euler diagrams. First, draw an Euler diagram, all baseball players are athletes. Then draw an Euler diagram, or you can use the same one somehow. All ballet dancers are athletes. And then see if you can come up with a counterexample to the conclusion of, therefore, no baseball players are ballet dancers. All right, give it a try and see what you come up with. Okay, so this first scenario, all baseball players are athletes. I drew a big circle for my athletes, and I put a baseball player inside, okay? Then all ballet dancers are athletes. Well, I can use the same thing, and then my ballet dancers, okay? So my conclusion is no baseball players are ballet dancers. Well, that's what they're looking for this Euler diagram, but can I come up with counterexample to this statement that still holds my two premises true. So for instance, I could somehow overlap the baseball players and the ballet dancers. I still hold true all baseball players are athletes. It's still within that big circle. It's still true that all ballet dancers are athletes, but it proves that this statement here, the conclusion, is false, okay? I could have also drawn it like this where I put my ballet dancers inside of my baseball circle, which is still inside of my athletic or athlete circle. So baseball players are athletes, still true. All ballet dancers are athletes, still true. 
but it counter argues this fact here. It proves that my conclusion is false. So there's another counter example. Then I can switch it. I can put my baseball circle inside my ballet circle, which is still inside my athletic or athlete circle. So I still have all baseball players as athletes. I still have all ballet dancers are athletes, but I am proving that this is not the case. Okay? So this argument, no baseball players are ballet dancers, is invalid because I was able to show multiple counter examples to that argument by holding true to the initial premises. Okay? If you have questions on this, let me know. We'll chat in class.